gosh. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Pastor Don Weekly Podcast Show. Thank you so very much for joining me and listening to my weekly devotional. Anywhere you can find it on social media, but I'm excited to say that we are on iHeart Radio as well as Spotify and everywhere else on social media. So please check us out in whatever you can find us. <laughs> exactly, wherever you can find us. <laughs> I love each and every week bringing you a Bible study on some of my thoughts I have based on what God's Word teaches. But before I get started on my opening thoughts, I want to, of course, welcome my brother in Christ, Donovan, to the show. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. Uh, the weather is nice and cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Christmas is next week. Christmas is next week. And, you know, I'm, 2019 yes. is in two weeks. Yes. It's like, are you crazy? It's, the year went by very, very fast. <laughs> it really did. But you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm sure you, my, my, my Christmas gift's in the mail, right? Yeah, abs- You know what? Absolutely. All right. I, I forgot to tell you. This is the time of year I become a Muslim. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess I'm not going to see that gift for a while. Anyways, let me get started on my opening thoughts. You know, let me first, before I get started, let me do a quick recap. You know, three weeks ago, I introduced a new four-week series that I call Advent. To refresh your memory, here's what Advent is all about. The definition of Advent is the four-week time period between Thanksgiving and Christmas when the church celebrates the first coming of Christ to the world. The word Advent in the Greek means the coming or arrival. So, The season of Advent is focused on the coming of Christ to this earth as our Messiah. It's a four-week preparation of our minds and hearts to the coming of Jesus Christ to the world. It's a time of celebration. It's a time of anticipation. When everything around the world is going nuts, we focus on Christ and his coming to this earth. The Advent season fills our hearts with peace, hope, joy, and love for what the season is truly all about the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, three weeks ago, I looked at the hope of Jesus during the Christmas season, noting that in Christ, even the impossible is possible. Two weeks ago, I looked at the joy in Christmas by you and me reflecting the light of Christ to all people during this season. Last week, we looked at the Prince of Peace, or the peace of Jesus Christ, surrendering the season to him and truly being able to enjoy peace in our hearts during Christmas time. And today we're going to take a look at the love of Christ in this Advent season. So you might be thinking right now, how in the world can we have true love in our hearts during the hectic and chaotic Christmas season? Well, in my opinion, it all starts with loving Christ first at Christmas time, above all the other hype of Christmas. In other words, it's loving Christ over buying gifts. It's loving Christ over preparation of, of friends and family coming over. It's loving Christ over the decorations and all the Santa Claus Rangers things that Christmas has become. It is loving Christ first. Let me read to you from 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 15. 1 John 4, 15 starts off, If anyone acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him, and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love of God that he has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God lives in him. Folks, the essence of having a blessed Christmas this year, and not only this year, but every single year, is by knowing Jesus Christ and his amazing love for you and me. We must never forget Why Jesus came down to this sin-infested world to die a brutal death on the cross for our sins and then rising three days later. Jesus teaches us in John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this, that he lay his his life down for his friends. But before Jesus could die, before he can rise from the dead, before he can ascend into heaven in glory... He had to be born on this earth first. The story of the birth of Jesus needs to be the centerpiece of our Christmas season. Jesus is the true definition of what real love is all about and the type of love that we can provide to our households and to our friends. Jesus is the perfect example of what true agape love is all about. Folks, 
And when we know Jesus, and when we know and feel the love of the birth and the story of his birth from the Bible, then we truly know love in our hearts. So let me take this a little bit further. When we know the love of Jesus and center his birth in our families, then we can learn to love others sacrificially and unconditionally, just as Christ loved us. It is no longer a love based on feelings. It is based on the person being a child of God. Let's face it. Sometimes, and I know Donovan and I have talked about this before, sometimes we need to hang around people at parties, events, and even our own family gatherings that we love, but we really just don't like right. very, very much. Everyone has a crazy uncle who does embarrassing things to ruin your event. We all have that. Somebody in our lives. Or you hear bad rumors about someone you love, or could even be yourself, and it ruins your spirit of the Christmas season. But folks, it truly does not have to be that way. As you and I grow in our faith, and we continue to walk each and every day with Christ, and living in His love this Christmas season, then we can handle anything, any uncomfortable situation, any uncomfortable people that are part of our Christmas celebration. And the reason is because it's the love of God that fills us. Not the season, not the hype around it, but the love of Christ that is engulfed in our hearts that allows to love people and the season that possibly we're not comfortable with or possibly that we are so anxious about. Folks, the key to an awesome Christmas is to make your Christmas season completely of the love of God that he has for you and me. Take time with your family and your friends and read the Christmas story and then talk about it. Everybody seems to know the Christmas story, but if we kind of disregard it like we already know why we're going to talk about it because that's what Christmas is all about. The love of Christ coming down to this earth to die for our sins. Let it just not be another Christmas that Christ just seems like is in the background of your homes. Let the words of Luke chapter 2 touch your heart as you reenact how you would have felt if you were living back in those days. If you were the one chosen by God like Mary and Joseph or shepherds in the field. You know what? I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to put my friend Donovan here <laughs> on the spot. All right. I want Donovan to take a second, take a step back a little bit, and I just want him to, I'm asking ask you to clear your mind. My mind's clear. Just clear your mind of anything that you're thinking about. And I want you to think back if you were Joseph back at the time of the birth of Jesus. You were in love with this beautiful teenage girl named Mary, and you had decided that you were going to marry this beautiful young girl. However, you find out from Mary that she is pregnant with a child coming and you know that you were not the one that impregnated her. So if you were Joseph back in those days, tell me, Donovan, what would you be thinking? What would you be feeling if you were him? Like most uh, young men and people like that, I'd be like, well, uh, I'd have some uh, caution about you know continuing with the marriage with this one woman. I, I'd he, really be cautious. He's being real nice. Yeah. No, nah, he would have probably <laughs> dumped her. He says, yeah. who, are you, who are you having relations right. with outside? You know I was going to marry yeah. you. I'd reconsider. I would say, I have nothing to do with you. This is not yeah. my child. What are you doing? But Joseph didn't do that. Joseph decided that he was not going to shame her. He wasn't going to embarrass her, but he was going to kind of leave quietly so that she does not get In, yeah, embarrassed. And worst Embarrassed, but even killed. Killed. Because in those days, Stone. that's what they did mm -hmm. when you uh, had relations with someone that was not your husband. But then the angel came in a dream to Joseph and explained mm -hmm. the entire situation. But I look at myself and thinking, my gosh, if I was Joseph, I know what I would do. I would not have, a, 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 my mind would go crazy. How about if you were a shepherd? Now, it's hard for Donovan to imagine himself a shepherd because he's so <laughs> high class and the shepherds were so low class. Right, right. Matter of fact, on the pecking order, you would probably put the shepherds right at the bottom. Right at the bottom with the serfs. Uh, exactly, with the <laughs> serfs. And then all of a sudden, you're out there doing your thing with your sheep mm -hmm. and you see this angel yeah. coming to your fields telling you and making the amazing announcement about a savior being born. How would you feel if you were a shepherd? 
you know, at that point, at that point, I would throw myself on the ground and probably soil my pants <laughs> because I'd be so scared, overwhelmed, and scared. Yeah. yeah, everyone would do the exact same thing because no one expected it. It's not like you. It's not like they had a Bible said, "Oh, whoa, angels going to come today." Yeah, about the, two hours. I've been expecting him. No, it was a complete and utter shock to those shepherds that was in the field. But what did the shepherds do? They focused on Jesus. They went to where Jesus was being laid. Amen. And then they basically, and they witnessed the birth of Christ. Those are the ways that we need to reenact the Christmas story. Ask your family and friends how they would react if they were Mary in those days, if they were Joseph in those days, if they were the shepherds in those days, or even the wise men who spent literally weeks and months traveling 800 plus miles to, to see this child. Miracle. That's how you enjoy the love of Christ during this Christmas season. You know, Jesus was born in a humble stable. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the creator of this earth, born in a stable. No pump, no cameras, no Twitter, mm -hmm. no newspapers, nothing. The only sign was a star in the sky. And he did this. Why? Because of his amazing love for you and me. Folks, our goal this Christmas season is to know the love of Jesus in our hearts so we can love others in the same way. Knowing Jesus is knowing what true agape, unconditional love is all about. I believe that you and I and Donovan can have the best Christmas ever in this last week. We've only got a week more to go when we focus on Jesus rather than the things around the Christmas holidays. Remo remember this, folks, as we end the Advent season. The hope in Christ this Christmas season is God, and only God, can make the impossible possible when we completely put our trust in Him. And there easily can be joy during this hectic season when we allow the light of Jesus to reflect all people and in everything we do. And in truly, it is truly the light of Jesus Christ that brings joy to our heart, especially now as we get in towards the end of our Christmas season. Peace in this chaotic season is not an oxymoron because peace is possible when we surrender each day to the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. He is our calm in the storm, especially as we get to the last week of Christmas. He is the rest that we need when everything else around us seems to be out of control. And the only way, again, folks, to have true agape love for people, for the season, and more importantly for ourselves, is when we allow the love of Christ to fill us up each and every day. God showed us agape love in the presence of Jesus Christ. So let the love of Christ in our hearts dominate any other emotion that we might be feeling this Christmas season. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, first of all, again, we thank you so much for your word. And Lord, we thank you so much for showing us what true agape committed love looks like. Lord, we want to have an intimate and deep relationship with you, especially now as we turn towards the last week before Christmas. Lord, we do want to put you first in our lives. So we ask you to bless everyone listening or watching this podcast today. Let us continue to focus this Advent season on your love for us in anticipation of the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you, we worship you, and we give you glory. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's opening statements on the conclusion of our Advent season looking in at the love of Jesus Christ. We can experience that same love for all people, especially during this last week of Christmas, when we surrender our hearts to Him. And before I go any further, before I say anything else, I want to make sure I get this crystal clear. From Donovan and from me, we want to wish all of you a very, very merry and blessed Christmas with your family and friends. We will not be doing a podcast next Tuesday. You know why, Donovan? It's Christmas. It's Christmas Day, so are we going to allow you to enjoy your Christmas? And of course, Don and I enjoy our Christmas with our families as well, but we want to make sure that you have an awesome Christmas holiday season. In any case, but you don't have to stop looking at my Reflections Ministries Facebook page because they go on each and every day, including Christmas Day. So please, keep taking a look at it. Keep being filled with the love of the Lord through that page, but more importantly as well, 
Keep sharing it with your family and friends. Folks, people need Jesus more than ever, especially in this season. As a pastor, I, I talk to so many people that are so depressed that are so full of anxiety, and that are so full of the hype of Christmas that they forgot what the season's all about. They need Jesus. Mm -hmm. They need the love, peace, joy, and hope of Christ. And that's what Reflections Ministries' Facebook page is all about. So please, if you've never checked it out, do it on Facebook. If you have, continue to please share the devotionals, the memes, the podcast Mm -hmm. with all your family and friends. Thank you so much, and God bless you and your families. Okay. Hey, uh, Pastor Don, I want to thank you for all that you do during the year. And I just want to tell a lot of the listeners out there, thank you so much for supporting uh, Pastor Don's weekly podcast. Uh, I got some messages that, that always ask. They say, why don't you ever announce you know where your church is and it's in paris california it is yeah it is and, and a, lot of, a lot of people have asked me the same right. question because i don't want to make this podcast about my church right. i want to make this podcast all about christ and about uh, again because a lot of people says well you only do those podcasts because you want to promote your church i never you, mentioned yeah it. you never mentioned it. i never <laughs> mentioned it because it, again people start thinking it's an ulterior motive you mm-hmm. want to just raise the numbers of your church and all it has nothing to do with that right. this podcast from the very very beginning when donovan and i start this almost two years ago it was all for one purpose to spread the love of Christ not to spread a church not to spread a denomination to spread Christ and that's what it's all about but yeah I do have a church it's a, it's a small church probably less than 100 people in the city of Paris California in the Riverside County area and it's a it's it's, it's a great church we um I I was so blessed this last week to have to be able to um we took a bunch of kids right. we took six seven kids out to Hemet and I took over 150 pounds worth of food to a Amen. homeless shelter Amen. out in Hemet called Restart Homeless Shelter. And then, of course, we spread that, for not just to them, but to mm-hmm. a number Amen. of different shelters in the Hemet area. But the blessing it was that this homeless shelter was a family shelter. So there was probably between the ages of uh, zero and 17, there was about 20 kids <laughs> in part of the shelter. And we were blessed. You know, we were so blessed to be able to give out gifts. To each and every one of those kids in that shelter, even the big kids, Mm -hmm. you know, got gifts and as well as the smaller kids. We had a great time. We sang Christmas songs. We did the Christmas story. We had an altar call. And of course, we gave all the glory to God. So it's those things that what's what make Christmas all about. And of course, yesterday, excuse me, two days ago on Sunday, we were so blessed that our children did our, their Christmas production. And I'll, I'll tell you this, they're, they're better than most shows on TV, to be quite <laughs> honest with you. They did an awesome job. And I'm telling you, they got the true meaning. When you see six-year-olds and seven-year-olds Into worshiping it. God, I mean, singing songs from their heart with yes, the hand signals. It. Mm-hmm. It's like you look at your life and think, where's my spirit? Exactly. Why do I feel like these kids do? And I'm telling you, it was such a blessing. So it's like, it's like a gift that God gives us to allow us to see the true meaning of Christmas through the eyes of children. So, yeah, it was, it's, it's a really awesome thing. Right. So uh, Christmas is going to be next week, next Tuesday. So, you know, for those of you that are having a hard time this year, it's been a very struggle this year. You've been going through a lot of stuff this year. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again. If you don't have Christ in your life, why not give it a try? Exactly. And, and, and lots, lot, like I mentioned in my opening monologue, because a lot of people, I say, they say the same thing. I say, well, everybody knows the Christmas story. Uh, mm-hmm. People are not that interested in the Christmas story because mm-hmm. they all know the story mm-hmm. of you know Jesus, the angel visiting Mary and the shepherds right. and the wise men. They brought gifts. Yeah, we get mm-hmm. it. We know all that. And that's why I brought a, a different taste to it is that you need to actually put yourself in those people's positions Mm -hmm. because it just changes everything. It's not a story anymore. It becomes personal because that's exactly what Christmas is. It's personal. It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So when you look at it from that standpoint, you're looking at your teenage daughter who's 13 years old, probably the same age as Mary, Mm -hmm. and you ask her to put herself in Mary's shoes. How would she react? How would you react? (laughs) Exactly. Or a 17-year-old son who's basically maybe dating somebody and finding out that his girlfriend is pregnant and it's not your child. Right. How would you feel? And when you start putting it into a more personal tone, it just opens up completely the Bible and what it's all about. And that's what Christmas is. Understanding and then celebrating. Celebrating the birth of Jesus. Yeah. And we do it in our house and it's a blessing. I hope that some of you will do the same thing. Right, right. Like I said, we have a new year coming up. Let's try new things. And Exactly. Uh, like I said, and... I always say this, always at the end of the year, and I say this anytime anybody asks me. 
with what's going on in the world today, if you think man is going to solve these problems, you are sorely mistaken. Yeah, man hasn't done a great job in some of the years that we've been here so right. far. All we've done is caused nothing but havoc, troubles, chaos, and wars. It's time to change the pattern, just like you said. It's time to put the put our faith in Christ. Allow Christ to lead, because that's the only thing we've got. There's no hope in this world, but there is hope in Christ, and that's what we that's what we emphasize so much on the Pastor Don show. Because that's how I got my hope. That's how Donovan gets his hope is by allowing Christ to lead us. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so um, for those that can, you know, that are abundantly blessed i hope that you get out there and uh don't just think during the holiday season if, if you're uh, feeding the homeless for the holidays during this week think about doing it for the year oh uh, absolutely yeah teaming with pastor don i mean he, pastor don does it all year long i mean he's out there doing that so i think it'd make a difference yeah and and, and, and donovan's so right you know a lot of people says oh we're gonna help in thanksgiving mm-hmm. we're gonna help in christmas well okay that's that's awesome i praise mm-hmm. the lord but there's 363 other days, right. and they're, and they and they're cold and homeless. So we gave out a ton of blankets. I didn't say yeah, mention blankets. that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So so, but what do we do the other days? And that's why I'm so blessed to have that bread ministry that I do every single. I've been doing it for over two years, right. and we deliver bread to six, five, six different organizations from the homeless to the mentally uh, um, the mentally handicapped uh, homes to different women's shelters. So that's a blessing. We do it every single week to be able to help people in need. And those are the things that you also can get involved with in regards to helping those, not only during the holidays, but even outside the holidays as well. Absolutely. 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 Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a little fun with Donovan this morning because <laughs> it is Christmas time. And, you know, it is all about Jesus. I get that. Mm-hmm. He gets that. Mm-hmm. But I want to kind of take a step back a little bit and have a little bit of fun in regard to understanding, you know, learning a little bit more about Donovan and his Christmases when he was growing <laughs> up. But the first thing I want to ask Donovan, and I know, I know I'm going to know the answer, but... So what do you want for Christmas this year? Uh, if you could ask just for one gift, and, and, and please don't say peace on earth. That's a Miss America <laughs> answer. Universe, that's a Miss yeah. America answer. If you could have one gift for Christmas this year, what would that be? You know, that, that's really a hard question because, you know, I'm one of those people that have been blessed to have everything that I need. Mm-hmm. And I don't really want any more than, than what I need mm-hmm. because to, to have all these toys and then die... I don't want to do that. <laughs> See, so I'm yeah. content where I'm at. But yeah. if I had to do one thing, I would say if I had one gift, I would want to make sure that the uh, oceans and the animals and stuff that are you know there don't go extinct. That we have that you know, mm-hmm. the pollution that we're we're doing that that mm-hmm. that would come to a stop. If I mm-hmm. if I had a you know, goal. Wow. Yeah. Let me adjust that halo, yeah. man. Wow, that's no, really I, I, cool. You know, you know, it's a problem. I yeah. Mean. Well, I'll tell you the one gift I'm going to be praying for for Donovan, you know, this year is, of course, I always pray for your health. Yes. Oh, thank yeah, you. I was going to say, because, yeah. you know, we all struggle with uh, health issues, issues yeah. minor versus a lot more uh, more major type illnesses. I know you struggle yeah. slightly with some health issues. Yeah. And, of course, that's my one thing that I will be praying for, thank not just at much, Christmas, yeah. is to yeah. allow your health yeah. to get stronger yeah. and not yeah. feel some of the pains that you're yeah, feeling. You know, it's funny that you brought that up real quick because uh, some people always say, well, why are you always bundled up, especially this time of year? Mm-hmm. And, you know, like you're not, well, you know, because I have arth- uh, severe arthritis, uh, rheumatoid mm-hmm. arthritis. And so when it's cold, my joints get affected really, really. Well, bad. that's just one yeah. reason. The yeah. other reason is because I'm kind of a, I'm kind of an idiot. I don't even own a coat. <laughs> right. I don't. <laughs> if it wasn't for a sweater, right. I wouldn't even have long sleeves. Right. So, right. yeah, but yeah, he's bundled yeah. up. Yeah, because yeah. you do have health yeah, issues. Health and issues so, yeah. Well, since he gave me, a, you know, that canned answer, <laughs> I want, oh, I want the environment to be great. Okay, that's awesome. And I, God bless him for that. But let me ask you this. When you were growing up, and let's say you were the ages of between 6 and 10, oh, man. what was your favorite gift that you remember receiving from... I'm not going to say Santa Claus because Santa yeah. Claus, I'm not into the Santa Claus thing. But what was the f- most famous favorite gift that you remember back when you were before teenager that you received? There's actually two. Back in the, when I was about six, the, the, they had the Spider-Man web shooters. Oh, my gosh. Did they really? Yeah. It, but it, it was like real generic compared to what they could do now. But it was like right. one of these. It was just like, like a dark thing. And my, me and my brother got it. My mom got it for us. I thought that was the greatest thing. And my oh, mom, my gosh. I never, I've seen those before. Yeah. I didn't know you had those. Yeah, okay. And, and uh, I got an orange 10-speed bike. That was the greatest gift I've ever had. Okay, how old were you when you got the 10-speed bike? Ten, 10 years old. Oh, how cool 10, is yeah. that? 10 years old. So that means that was about, well, I'm not going to give you your age, 1980. but 30. 1980. Okay, so that was about 35, 40 years ago. 10-speed mm-hmm. bikes probably were just really getting popular yeah. in that time phase. So you had, you had yeah. one that, uh, back in those. That, I never had a 10-speed bike yeah. and, and, until and, I was and, older. And, and that's when the skateboards were going from steel wheels mm-hmm. to polyurethane. Okay. So, you know. 
Uh, that shows them our, that shows our age, you know. Remember the skates for steel? Right, I do. <laughs> the smart I do. They went to polyurethane, thing, so it was around that time. Wow. We used to go to people's uh, empty um, pools, and we used to skate in the empty pools. How cool! You know, that, yeah, now they got skate parks yeah, everywhere. But so. yeah, that oh, that is so cool. So, yeah. Oh, that is so awesome. How about your kids? When the, your kids were going, because how many ch- children do you have? Two. When your children go, do you remember one gift that you may have gotten either one of your children that you remember was something that they probably will never forget? My kids are totally rotten because, uh, <laughs> I, I, no, I, I'm going to say this because it, it isn't like they wanted simple things. You know, these kids mm-hmm. nowadays, and it's all kids nowadays, mm-hmm. they don't want the simple things. The first thing that came out of my, my, my kids, my PlayStation, PlayStation oh, this or the, you know, the, the high tech mm-hmm. stuff. The, the white, yeah, all that yeah. PlayStation type. Type stuff. Yeah, yeah Xboxes just, and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, so so I, that was probably a gift that they would remember they received back when right. they were younger. And, and the good thing that I did with that, though, I get them the James Bond game series. Okay. Because that way I would tell them, read the books. And that would kind okay. of encourage them to read. Okay, so well. that helped them, yeah. Yeah, go them yeah it's, it's just, what, what was the the gift that, um, not the PlayStation, but the one that you could actually act out? Oh, that that was like the Wii. Wii, the, the Wii. Wii. Yeah. That was a great thing yeah. because I gave that to my son, you know, as one of his gifts a long, long time uh-huh. ago. And I played that more than he did. <laughs> that was my exercise. Right. Go out there, you know, do all those wee yeah. things and all that stuff. That was what I used to do. But yeah. that was one of those more memorable gifts yeah. that I gave uh, that I but gave our so kids. Expensive. Oh my gosh, they they're really so are. They Every, so everything now yeah. is. I can only imagine what a ten-speed bike. Uh, let's say a, a good. Yeah. Lightweight, ten speed bike. What would that go for today? Man, that's a thousand dollars probably. Know, and then I have like little cousins, and what I would do is for kids, I would give them like board games, uh-huh. strategy chess, or Sorry, the game Sorry, or something oh, like yeah. that. Oh yeah, Sorry, I remember that game. And you know, they look at you like strange, but you know, these are games for like seven dollars, maybe twelve dollars. Uh-huh. They look at you like, what's this? Exactly. Where, where's the? Yeah, where's the seventy five dollar? Where's my real gift? <laughs> right. Oh, I'm, yeah, I know. It's, kids. it's crazy. That's what he meant by rotten. They're spoiled yeah, rotten, rotten types. Of, rotten. Well, there's a reason why I'm asking Donovan these questions, because it's always good to have, you know, memories, good memories of Christmases, you know, even from the secular end, you know, gifts and stuff. There's a time of joy. We laugh a lot. I'm sure you did, too. And enjoy. And you remember certain gifts that just brought a lot of joy to your heart. But now I'm going to ask you a question I really want you to think about, okay. Donovan. Um, and I really want the audience to think about it because I want, I want you folks to think, you know, some of those gifts that brought you joy when you were a child as you were growing up that you remember that or a gift that you gave your own children recently or whatever that brought them joy. But the question I want you to think about now, Donovan, is um, what, what are you, you know, oh, let, me, let me rephrase that. Every one of us has been to a birthday party. Yeah. I like birthday parties. I, I really do because they're a time of joy, celebration. They're a time of fun, and, and I like cake, <laughs> birthday cake, and all that stuff. You know, blowing out candles. It's all fun. Yeah. It's all it's all good fun. But there's always one tradition that happens when you go to a birthday party, hmm. and that one tradition is you bring the guest of honor a gift. Right. That's just what it is. Right. When you go to invited to a birthday party, you bring a right. birthday gift. So the question I want Donovan to think about and the question that I want all of you to think about as well is since December 25th, we know that that may not, that's probably not the date that Jesus was born, but it's the date that we celebrate his birthday. It doesn't matter what day, exact day he was born. It's the day we celebrate it. So from, from our standpoint, it is his birth date per se because we celebrate it on that day. So if we're going to be going to a birthday party in a week from today, it's Jesus' birthday. The question I have for you, Donovan, is what are you going to be giving Jesus this Christmas? Wow. What gift would you want to be giving? Now, you know, before you answer, I'll let him think yeah. about it for a second. Normally when you give gifts, it's not one that you want to have the person receiving it exchange right. or take it back right. because they didn't like it. You want it to be a gift. That lasts a long yes. period of time. You know, one of the things that always makes me laugh is when you the guests get gifts. Then when you go to the store on December 26th, you see the long, line. long line of people right. wanting to exchange it because they don't want the gift. They already have right. three or four of them and they want the money to mm-hmm. buy something new. Mm-hmm. Well, when we're talking about Jesus, we need to think about what personal gift that can we give to the guest of honor on December 25th wow. that's going to last, let's say, not only for the Christmas season, but into 2019 and beyond. So I know what Donovan's gift was to Jesus last year yeah. because we've been doing it for the entire year called a podcast <laughs> yes, yes. that he spends 
countless hours yeah. editing, producing, and then being part of the show for nothing. I mean, voluntarily everything to do these shows, yeah. which is a huge gift to God. Mm -hmm. And I know that's going to continue, hopefully, sure. God Absolutely. willing, in Absolutely. 2019. Absolutely. But if there's one gift that you could say that you'd like to give to Jesus this tw this week, next week, what would that be? God, that's, you know, I... I never thought about that because all I think about is myself. You don't really think about Jesus. most people. Most people, yeah. Don't. So, um, and what can you give a person that owns everything? Well, let me ask the question. Let me make it a little easier okay. for Donovan. What do you think? You know, normally when you go to birthday party, you guys, well, what do you want? Yeah, that's when most kids ask. Well, what do you want? Well, let me ask you. What do you think Jesus would want from you? Wow. I mean, you can't give yeah. any object to Jesus because he yeah. owns it all. Right. I mean, there's everything we have, everything you see belongs to God. So it's not like anything tangible we can give to God because it's all his anyways. So what do you think that Jesus would want from you? I think he would want me to love him with all my heart, soul, and spirit and give myself and follow him. So what will you give Jesus? This myself. Spirit? There you yeah, go. Myself. See, yeah. the idea of giving is the idea of what exactly <clears throat> would you want to bring wow. to Jesus during 2019 and what Jesus wants more than anything else is you, you. Mm -hmm. he wants you to pray more to him yes. he wants you to read more about him so you become closer to him he wants you to celebrate in, 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 uh, and, and worship him like in a church mm -hmm. or Bible study he wants you and one of the things that I've always commit, try to commit myself each and every year to give back to God is a little bit more of me Instead of me being more yes, focused, right. like Donovan said, he's so right. We are so much focused on ourselves right. that sometimes we forget that all Christ wants is us. Mm -hmm. And we need to be able to spend more quality, uninterrupted, no uh, electronic devices, mm -hmm. just time with, with Jesus. Jesus. That's what he wants. And that's what he wants from us. That's what he wants from you. That's what he Good wants point. from our families. That's exactly what it is. So the wow. fact that that's what Donovan says he's going to do, I believe this man. Sure, he says sure. he's, that's what he's going to do. But then that's also a gift that I also want to give. You know, a lot of people think, well, you're a pastor. You probably give a lot of time. You're like, mm -hmm. no, I really don't. <laughs> right. I mean, think about it. You know, pastors on, get on the same problem as everybody yeah. else. We're so busy doing so many things well, and having so many things in our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, where's my intimate personal right. time with the well, Lord? Well, well, if the people would think about it, you guys are so busy shepherding the flock exactly and to their needs Ex of course you're serving god but you're you know you're where's our own yes, personal right. intimate exactly. relationship with him exactly. i mean i probably spend probably uh, here's a confession <laughs> probably even less time than donovan with the lord because i'm so busy doing other things <laughs> right. for the and other people and that's shepherding. and that's honoring god with that i'm right. not saying it's not but he wants me right he wants a personal, intimate yeah, a relationship point. with Pastor Don and not not point. only the serving part of it, but also just me just completely indulged in Christ. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's that's what I'm going to give to Jesus this Christmas. Good that's point. what Donovan's going to give to Jesus. And I'm going to encourage you as well to give yourself, just more of yourself mm -hmm. to the Lord. Not, not in any other way. But in a deeper and more intimate relationship with yes, him. Absolutely. We got a yeah, few more a minutes point. here. I want to ask Donovan one mm -hmm. last question. You know, there are there are two groups of people. There are two groups of people in the Christmas story, and you all know the Christmas story, mm -hmm. that are what I would call unnamed. But they all they both play very, very, very important roles on that very first Christmas time period. Mm -hmm. And I guess the question I want you to think about out there, and I want to ask it to Don here to say, is what role are we playing 2018 during our Christmas time? Two groups of people. The first group of people we've already talked about is the shepherds. shepherds. We have no idea the names of the shepherds. Right. There's right. no, we know the name names. of the angel mm -hmm. that appears, angel Gabriel, okay. who appeared no, it wasn't even Angel was Gabriel. Michael. No, it, was, it wasn't even Gabriel. Gabriel appeared to Mary. I'm sorry. Right, right. We just know that there's angels that appeared mm -hmm. to the shepherds, right, to but we don't have any idea who the shepherds were. Mm -hmm. We just know that they were shepherds. But we also know how they reacted when they heard the, the, the message of the angels. Mm -hmm. They went, they left their sheep, they left their livelihood, per se, because that it. is their life is their sheep, and, it and they trekked to where the angel told them to follow the star, to where Jesus, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus were. And when they got to that stable, they worshipped God. That's what they, but they were unnamed. But they took the time to worship God, the shepherds. We don't know their names. There's another hmm. famous character in this birth of Jesus story 
that didn't react the same way. And I'm talking about the innkeeper. Ah. Nobody knows the name of the innkeeper. What exactly do we know about the innkeeper? We know that he told Mary and Joseph that there was no room mm. in the Get inn. Right. And then he says, well, by the way, I've got a, you know, I've got a barn back there or a stable. You know, if you want to go lay there. He saw that Mary was pregnant. Mm -hmm. He saw that they were in need, but he had no time or he had no um, ambition to help. Mm -hmm. this couple, so he basically put him in the barn. But even after that, did he go check on him? Nope. Did he go and worship him? Did he just say, hey, all I care about is making sure my inn was um, was full so I can receive the cash, the mm -hmm. money? Because we knew all the inns were full because mm -hmm. of the census. That's the reason why people were going to their towns. But he didn't care. He wasn't like the shepherds. The shepherds took the time to go see Jesus. The innkeeper basically brushed Jesus off, put him in the stable, and let him go. So the question we need to ask himself is, do we have room in our hearts for Jesus? The shepherds did. They left everything, and they went to go see Jesus. They left their sheep and everything. They followed the Lord's command. However, the innkeeper had no room for Jesus, and we never heard anything from him again, except that the one line that he says. And the question for you and I is, how much room in our hearts do we have for Jesus coming up on December 25th? Wow. In other words, when Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart on December 25th, because let me, let me, let me kind of explain your December 25th. You're going to be surrounded by people you love. You're going to have gifts, and hopefully hopefully you'll have gifts, mm -hmm. maybe children, and a lot food. of laughing, food. a lot of food, mm -hmm. a lot of laughing, celebrating, probably some arguing, I mean, any type of family function. Basketball's You're, on, the big screen TV. Absolutely, and there's going to be a lot of noise, mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of things going on, it's going to be a good time with family and friends, and then guess what? You're going to hear a knock. You're going to hear a knock on the door, but it's not going to be on the door of your front, your front door of your home. It's going to be the knock of the door in your heart. And Jesus will say, do you have room for me? Do you have room mm. for me on December 25th as the guest of honor to be a part of your Christmas celebration? And then we have a choice to make at that time. The choice is this. Are we going to be like the shepherds who mm. took the time? Yes, they were busy out in the fields doing what they shepherds do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they left it all because they, want, they needed to be with Jesus and worship him. Or are we going to be like the innkeeper who says, no, I don't have time for you, Jesus. There's no room for you in my heart because I'm so filled with all this other stuff going on in my house. I don't have time for you. Just go to your room and do your thing and then, then leave me alone. The question is, which one is that going to be for us this Christmas season? A week from today, December 25th, we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus. But what role is Jesus going to play in, in our December 25th celebration? I am praying that for you at home, that it's going to be like the shepherds, that you are going to invite Jesus into your homes, that Jesus will be your guest of honor, and that Jesus will be glorified in every activity you do with your family and friends. And we will not be like the innkeeper who basically brushes Jesus off from our hearts and says, Jesus, I know it's your birthday, but it's not that important. What's important is what's in front of me. We cannot be like the innkeepers. We need to be like the shepherds and allow Christ to be the center of our homes. Amen. 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 That, that, that's a good point. You don't really think about that. Story, yeah. So. You know, it's funny. A lot of people don't think about the innkeeper because yeah. it's, he plays such a minor role. But he, if you really think about it, he plays a huge role. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He really does. And I don't want to be that innkeeper. Right. I want to be more like a shepherd, the lowly, lowly shepherd who gave time and who worshiped God on the day of his birth. Right. Um, and, and what's the other person we kind of forget? The reason why Joseph and Mary flee, because didn't Herod put the word out? To yeah, Herod, Herod, when Herod, when Herod told the wise men that he wanted to go worship Christ, which he didn't, all he mm -hmm. wanted to do was find the, the, the baby yeah, to sorry. kill him, mm -hmm. to kill him. So yeah, they were had they had to leave the stable where they were at and right. flee to Egypt, right. basically, because he, he made an edict to kill all Males, newborn born, young babies, babies mm -hmm. two years and younger, because then they would kill the Messiah, and then he would be no threat to the throne. So, yeah. So wow. there's a lot of characters in this story that I probably would not want right. to be like. But then there are some, mm -hmm. like the wise men, like the shepherds, that I definitely wouldn't you know, want to you know, be. And, and it's funny that um, uh, you bring you bring this story up because it brings a lot, a lot of uh, questions for me. Because uh, Joseph really goes unheralded. 
He does. You know, as the a unknown father. Joseph. Right. He really does. He goes on Harold. And he's actually a hero in this story. Right. But he's not treated like that. Right. He's like the he's in the background. Yeah, everybody in the background, knows right. Everybody knows Mary and mm-hmm. everybody mm-hmm. knows Jesus, Jesus, of course, and mm-hmm. everybody knows the shepherds. But Joseph is just there. there. He's just there. But yet he plays such a, a huge role as a protector and a fa- you know as a father what the thing does as right. a father of the and and uh, as a male model for mm-hmm. you know the Lord he does play a big role but yeah mm-hmm. he's just like the quiet leader it's yeah, awesome because uh, somebody asked me they go well you know what did Joseph get out of the deal. Well, a lot Raising of people, Christ. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, he, he got the thing of, of being the um, the father figure to Christ in, in, a, in, a, in a manly world. Yeah. But people keep forgetting. After Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph had children. Yes. So many. he finally he finally got with his wife. Right? Many children. He yes. Had, he I was think blessed. We know of at least four mm-hmm. step brothers that Jesus yeah. had. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jude, James, uh, half brothers, right. half brothers, yeah, half brothers right, exactly, right. half brothers. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. half brothers that Jesus had. So yes, they they did have a, a, a bigger family mm-hmm. type thing. But again, another thing. I've only got a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine being the father of Jesus? Wow. How do you how do you discipline Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, um, don't do that. Uh, hello. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, I, I, and I hope I'm, I'm not using the right analogy, but remember that episode of the Twilight Zone, the monster with Billy Mummy. Okay, You're a bad man. <laughs> You're a bad man. And he was a kid, and he was like they called him a monster because everything that he said like came true. He took this town and just. And the father and the mother were like really afraid of him. Cloris yeah. Leachman was in the episode. Gotcha. And you know, it was like. They wanted to, ki- excuse me, but they wanted to kill the kid in the episode, but they were so afraid because he could turn you into a jack-o'-lantern or send you to the cornfield. <laughs> Only the Twilight Zone yeah, would do that. <laughs> but, you know, but, but, but just think about that. If, if yeah. you know, you're, you're the uh, stepfather of the Messiah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and he's like, I want an apple, and you're the father figure, and you've got to discipline this kid. <laughs> Good luck on that. Yeah, you know, or he's telling yeah. you how to grow the crops. And <laughs> he's just like, he's three years old. Well, he's a carpenter, so he, right. he, he's telling Joseph how to yeah, build the home, right. and all this, like, and you can't say anything because right. you know that he knows. Yeah, his wisdom is way uh, over over the top, I think. So. That would be a. Uncomfortable. Awesome. I mean, it's uncomfortable, but it'd be awesome to kind of be like, what do you do? <laughs> you know, and one of the things that we're going to talk about when we get closer to the Easter season is what happened to Joseph? Yeah. Because That's Joseph is nowhere nowhere in the He's scene no yeah. at all, especially during the time of, 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 the, of, of the ministry of Christ and then the death of Christ. There is, you know, John is the one that's with Mary right. at, the, at, the, at, the, at the crucifixion. Fiction, right. So what happened to Joseph? What, when we get closer to Easter, we'll, go, we'll talk a little bit more about oh, that. But that's going to be interesting. It will be really, left. really fun to do. We've only got about a minute and a half mm-hmm. left here. So thank you so much for listening. And I, again, Donovan and I both want to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. Safe, blessed with your family and with your friends. Again, don't forget Don Meinberg, author, Facebook yes. page, Reaching New Heights, the four-book series that helps middle school and young high school kids get godly advice, guidance, and wisdom from his word. Not from the world, but from his word. Yes. Check it out, Don Meinberg, author. Of course, I've got the Reflections Ministry Facebook page yep. that is uh, slowed down in December, but I think December sure. is a slow month. Mm-hmm. But keep sharing. Because, again, every time you share, you're witnessing to God's Word. Anything else from you, Donovan? Hey, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, it is the holidays. It is Southern California where we live, and I don't know where you live. Please be careful on the traffic out there. A lot of people have been, been uh, got killed just within this week in well, California. I don't know if you heard about this, but here in the, in Riverside County, there's the Harley Knox over ramp. Yes. Uh, a young lady wanted to kill herself. Had the whole, uh, both sides of the freeway uh, gridlocked for about eight hours. Eight hours yeah. the, the good thing is that she did not. She did not. And they, did. then they talked her away from it. But that's what the holiday sometimes brings yeah, is that right. type of, you know, depression, discouragement and, and all that. So yeah, please turn to Christ. Christ and Christ's love will bring you up mm-hmm. and, and, and show you what the season's and, about. And the funny thing about the accidents that have been happening, every time I see an accident on, on TV, somebody that got killed in a traffic accident, please be careful out there. I always wonder, did they give their life to the Lord? Yeah, me too. I do the exact same thing. First thing I think, are they saved? Yeah, are they saved? Yeah. Are they, did they surrender to Christ? Because that is, that's the ultimate question to ask when someone makes, you know, some, when something tragedy like that happens. Well, again, folks, God bless you. Have a merry, merry Christmas. We will not 
have a Pastor Don show uh, for the rest of the year. So I also want to wish you a very, very happy and safe New Year. Hopefully, I'll talk to Donovan, but hopefully the, the Wednesday after yes. the New Year's, we will come back and start brand new 2019 Absolutely. with Refresh. the Pastor Don Weekly Podcast Show. All God right. bless you. Have a blessed Christmas, blessed New Year, and stay safe. Merry Christmas, everybody.